What's up, my nap fam? It's your girl T, aka the Nappy Headed Jojoba, and we are talking today about the five, I think it's five best investments in my hair care arsenal. Now, when I say investments, I don't want you guys to think these are all gonna be super expensive items. In fact, many of them are quite inexpensive, but some of them are a little bit pricey for what they are, but they are worth it to me. And by the way, I just lost the sun. It is an overcast sun coming in and out kind of day. So that's gonna be the case throughout the video. What can you do? The first item is this ridiculously huge shower cap. I found this at the beauty supply and I didn't even know it was gonna be this big. I was just looking for a regular shower cap to replace my normal one. And I noticed that this one said extra large or, or oversized or something. And I figured, oh, that might be good for when my hair isn't super compact, it'll be handy. And then when I took it out of the package and unfolded it, I was just like, this looks like a garbage bag. But this shower cap has wound up being awesome for when I have a kinky twist style in my head or something like that. I'm actually about to install another set of boho locks because I'm in the mood and I've really been missing that style. I really loved it when I did it last summer and I did pick up another set or two. So once I have those in my hair, it's gonna be really nice to have this on standby because this was super clutch the last time I had those purple kinky twists in my hair a couple months ago, back in January. In the past, I've always had to use a plastic grocery bag from the grocery store or wherever, and they never really stay in place. They're always sliding off the back of my head in my shower and not staying where I put them, no matter how taut I manage to tie them. Inexpensive, super useful, awesome. With this and any other items that I can find online, I will link them in the description box. Next is something that may come as a bit of a shocker. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, it is a comb. This is my comb. I've had it for quite a long time, back before, well before I became a finger detangler exclusively, but as of late, I have been combing my hair um, with a specific method that I've kind of figured out that works for my hair. I talk about that more in this video. But yes, I am no longer, or at least not at the moment, detangling with my fingers exclusively. I have been using a comb to help aid in the process and it's kind of a hybrid detangling method. That's, that's what I've been calling it in my head anyway. And even though this comb has been basically sitting around collecting dust for many years, I'm really happy that I have it and that I have rediscovered it. I love it because it's got extremely long teeth and they are more widely spaced than teeth I could find on any other comb. This comb is also seamless, so it's got less chances of creating nicks and snags on your hair as you are using it to comb through because it won't have that raised seam from being in the mold. It's all one solid piece and was filed down essentially to create the comb. This comb is my bottom bitch, but I also have a smaller version. There's sort of a mini size one of this. That one is currently in my shower, but the teeth on that one are spaced a little bit more close together, I believe. I can't quite remember, but if you hold them up side by side, the teeth are spaced slightly differently. Nothing too significant, but I do like having both options. And then for a third option, I also have this comb, which is by the same brand, and this one's got the closest teeth of all, so if I really want to be more thorough, or perhaps my hair is already in a stretched state, and I feel comfortable enough to comb through with something a little bit more closely spaced, I'll use this side. This side I've basically never used, ever. This is just way too fine for me, but you know, I've got the option and I, if I want it. And this comb is also seamless, just like this one and the mini version of this one. So I really love these. These combs are more on the expensive side, but as I said, they are seamless and I think to some extent handcrafted and they were worth the investment to me. Even though I was a finger de detangler for all these years, I always like knowing that I did have combs that I could use that would be a little bit safer in my hair than something that you can just pick up from a beauty supply store. And now that I actually am combing my hair pretty much every wash day, but again, not the way that a person typically would in my own sort of method. It's really been nice to have these. Sticking with items that do cost you a fair chunk of change at the beginning, but then end up paying off in my opinion, are curl formers. I've talked about curl formers a bunch of times. I have quite a few videos with me experimenting and figuring out how to best use them on my hair. I use curl formers to stretch my hair. I use curl formers to trim my hair just to kind of get my hair straight-ish and then also use them to get my hair even since they're all the same length. These are real curl formers. I also have bootleg curl formers. I think both are good. I just tend to prefer the real ones because they're much gentler on my scalp because they're much softer. If you are interested in curl formers, I would suggest getting them from Amazon because they do tend to fluctuate in price. So I would just keep checking back and seeing if they do end up going on sale at some point because they do and that's generally when I have picked mine up. 
I have two sets of what I believe are the spiral curls. These are the barrel curls, which are the largest size. And then there's one size that I think are called corkscrew curls. Those are the smallest. I've never tried those. I think the spiral sides are a bit more effective at stretching my hair, but I do like having this size because they're bigger, which means I can do bigger sections, which means I can install them faster. So I really love having curl formers as an option for a heatless stretch if I want to or as a step one stretch to possibly apply heat after, which I've also done. And as the sun goes behind another cloud, uh, the next item is this black sack. <laughs> What's actually in here is a soft uh, dryer attachment hood thingy. Basically you attach this end of this hose part to your handheld blow dryer, your typical, you know, yellow bird style blow dryer, whatever it is that you have. And then this is the hood that you would put on your head to dry your hair. This particular one is made by the same company that makes curl formers, it's by Hair Flare. I think there are probably other options. I know I've seen and actually tried one that I ended up returning to Sally's because uh, as soon as I would turn on the blow dryer, it would shoot off my head once the air started flowing out of it. It was extremely annoying and I ended up returning it because I was like, this is a waste of time. How's this gonna work for anyone? This one, however, prevents that because it's got this drawstring. So once you put it on your head, you can cinch it around underneath your head underneath your head, underneath where the rollers are on your head. And it's also got a chin strap that you can fasten underneath so that when you've got it on, it's very secure. I just picked this up relatively recently, but it's been great because with my curl former, sometimes I don't want to let them air dry, particularly because sometimes I'm putting them a little bit later in the day and I hate sleeping in them. So I just wanna get my hair stretched and then remove them. The problem is once all the curl formers are in my hair, it's kind of hard to fit my head under a dryer. However, with this thing, I can fit it over my head with a head full of curl formers. It gets a little trickier if I go over the amount that's in one set. I've got more than one set of each size. So I've got, I think, 80 total of the spirals. And then I've got these plus an extra, I think I got a top up pack, they call it, of like 10 to 15 or so. So once you go beyond what actually comes in this set, it does get harder to fit everything under here, but it's doable most of the time. And the reason I went ahead and picked this up was I couldn't fit my head under my real dryer. I've got an actual hooded dryer, a PIBS. I went ahead and invested in a PIBS a few years ago. If you guys know anything about PIBS, those dryers ain't cheap. And time and time again, I would try to do a roller set only to not be able to fit under the hood of my PIBS. <laughs> I really have not gotten the use out of it that I thought and hoped I would when I purchased it. So I'm actually selling it on Craigslist as we speak. I'm actually meeting up with a girl this weekend who's buying it to do the handoff. So I will be happy to have that out of my apartment because it also takes up a lot of space. Whereas this fits in here and all you need is a regular handheld dryer, which you probably have anyway. So this thing, which is a fraction of the cost of a PIPS has worked out way better for me. And I wish I had just gotten this in the first place instead of ever even bothering to buy the pibs. The last thing that I consider one of the best investments in my hair care is real silk. It's really easy to get those polyester satin bonnets or whatever from the beauty supply store and I still use those two here and there. But when I hit a length retention slash growth plateau a few years back, I decided to get kind of strict about doing the best options of everything I could do for my hair. One of the main things I did to get past that plateau was using exclusively silk for wrapping up my hair at night instead of polyester satins and things like that. Now granted, I did have a few other changes that I made in my routine that probably contributed to my ability to get past that growth plateau. And I did a whole video on it. You can watch it here if you like. But I do think that my hair just does better on silk because I'm bougie and so is my hair. The good thing is silk doesn't necessarily have to be expensive. Most of my silk scarves I got from thrift stores. They usually have a big bin of them and near me they're $5 or less. So I have a ton of just random vintage silk scarves that I use to tie my hair up. I also have this giant silk bonnet type of deal which uh, I got from a black owned business, so I will link it in the description box as well. This one is great for when I have those protective styles that have a lot of added hair, similar to the giant shower cap, so kinky twists, things like that. That's when this one really comes in handy. And then I also like to sleep on a satin or real silk pillowcase. I do prefer silk, of course, but it's a nice backup in case my bonnet or scarf slips off during the night. So I've got my satin, or I think that one is silk pillowcase there. And here's another one. This one is real silk. 
definitely expensive, but you could probably just go to a fabric store and get a yard or so of silk and make a pillowcase because I've thought about doing that, but I've just been lazy. Or you can always just buy them because there are companies that make real silk pillowcases too. And if you don't want to invest in silk, I've gotten plenty of satin pillowcases from places like uh, Marshalls or Ross. If you just go to the bedding aisle, they will almost guaranteed have satin pillowcases that you can buy without having to buy a whole sheet set. I remember when I was first starting out, I bought several of those just pairs, you know, two satin pillowcases. They were always under $10. There you have it. Those are the five items that I think were some of the best investments of my coins to care for and look after my hair when you set aside the obvious stuff like shampoo and conditioner. I hope you found this helpful. Maybe this will give you some ideas of new things to try that might help you get over a struggle or plateau in your hair journey. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. That's a, that's a nappy-headed hose there. I'm going to take that down. <laughs>